my cat is here to just introduce you to him. He has the same name as myself, that's the me. <laughs> and ask long story, maybe we'll cover that in the future. Hey there, Doc. Welcome again to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be covering one of the topics that we have at university, anesthesia and CPR. So we're going to go through it step by step. We're going to explain to you how our university teaches us this subject, what we have to do within it and what to expect as a student. So with the help of my trusty tablet, we'll hopefully go through this bit by bit and uh, you'll get a bit more of an insight as to what we as dental students need to do here in Egypt. It is a one semester subject. Now, Egypt has a, uh, within our university, has a two semester uh, timeline. So some subjects run over both semesters. So some of the harder ones, such as uh, oral pathology, uh, operative dentistry, I mean, most of them are hard, if not all of them, but uh, anesthesia and CPR is a one semester subject, meaning that everything within it is covered within the first few months uh, of, of term. Now, the way that it works, each subject is made up of 100 marks. So obviously one mark is equal to 1%. Uh, and the first exam that we have is quiz number one, which is worth 7.5% or 7.5 marks. This basically covers the innovation of the head and neck. We're looking at the different teeth, maxillary and mandibular, and what nerves are innovating each one of those. So if, for example, we were to give anesthesia to a certain nerve, what would it do? What are the effects that would happen? Then we have the midterm in between it. Now, the midterm kind of breaks up the semester into two. We're covering again what we covered in quiz one and what we will be covering in quiz two. So this is going to be worth 20%. Um, and within this, you're going to have, for example, what are the complications of local anesthesia? What is the pharmacology of local anesthesia? Uh, and of course, what can we do to rectify that as dentists? Which brings me on to quiz number two, also worth 7.5%. And as just mentioned, those things that weren't dealt with in quiz number one, but are in the midterm, you're gonna find them here in quiz two. We then have the practical exam, which is worth a nice 20%. The way that it works, you'll be paired up with somebody at the beginning of the semester, you get to choose, which is quite nice. You'll then meet with the doctor along with all the other students on the day. You'll go in uh, and one by one they will ask you things about local anesthesia that you should know as a dentist. So for example, uh, I was asked personally to differentiate between two types of syringes. So one was a side loading syringe, one was a front loading syringe. Um, then it was a question around what was inside a carpool. So I was asked what is the anesthetic solution? The answer was articane in my case. Um, then they asked what was the uh, vasoconstrictor or vasopressor within that, uh, which was, um, if I can remember correctly, epinephrine. I was then asked the size of the cartridge, uh, 1.8 in my case, uh, and then a few other questions. Just to then uh, wrap our units. So this means basically ensuring there is a good level of infection control on our units uh, before then doing a mock-up uh, anesthesia or mock-up anesthetic technique on our partner, whereby another examiner would come over and ask you to uh, you know, mock anesthetize to, luckily we did it with the needle cap on, otherwise that would be very uh, brutal for my partner. So uh, thank God we were, we were able to do this in a safe environment. I was asked to do an upper second premolar, and the questions around it were, what is the technique? Where should I be sitting? Where should the patient be? How high or low should the chair be? Where should the light be, etc., etc. And at the same time, they're looking at different things. Are you ensuring that your gloves are on? Are you ensuring you're not cross-contaminating and then touching infected things and then trying to go back into the patient's mouth? Is the patient seeing the needle on the way through? Are you trying to keep that to a minimum and not scare your patient away? So there's so many different factors that they are sort of marking you on. Uh, it's daunting, but it's quite fun. Uh, at the same time, once they've seen you doing the techniques, both Buckley and Palatally, they will ask, okay, uh, you know, if, for example, you want to know that the patient is actually numb, what do you do as a dentist? Uh, they'll ask you questions as to what nerves innovate that tooth on this side and this side, and you have to give those answers. So as you're going along, they are basically marking everything down and ensuring that you know what you're doing, uh, and that will be out of the, the 20%. So I'm waiting for the results on that. And then we have over here, the final 
final exam, which is worth a nice 40%, covering all things we previously covered, plus the CPR aspect, which is something that we uh, haven't touched on just yet. Um, we've been given it from our university, I just mean within this uh, sort of video, we haven't touched on it yet. The final 5%, if you have paid attention and you're good with your maths, will be from the attendance. So all in all, you are looking at 100% right there and that's what makes up this subject. So how I want to kind of move forward uh, is to make a playlist that is going to cover the revision necessary to do well in this final exam. Uh, so the way that this subject works is broken down into the following things. The first one is techniques of local anesthesia. So you've got uh, maxillary, mandibular, and then we've also got the armamentarium, I hope I've said this correctly. So armamentarium, just for anybody who wants to know, is more so kind of the tools of the trade for us as dentists, you know, the syringe, the cartridge, the infection control materials, all the things that we need to do our job to ensure that the patient is numb. Uh, and within the maxillary and mandibular side of things, we're also going to uh, learn about innovations, landmarks, um, and just general anat anatomy, to be honest with you. So head of neck anatomy, cat's back again. So uh, he's also a keen learner. Uh, thank you very much, mate. <laughs> so that's the, the first sort of uh, video that we'll cover within the playlist. We'll then be moving on to the pharmacology. of local anaesthetics or local anaesthesia. Uh, for me, I would say this is probably my weakest of uh, the subjects. I'm not very good at pharmacology in, in general. Um, never really been a great fan of pharmacodynamics and kinetics. Uh, it's something that I will have to do because in next year we're going to learn a bit more about it. Uh, it's an ongoing struggle, but that's the life of being a student. And I think uh, the key message in this, just don't give up. Um, you know, dentistry is not for anyone. In fact, all subjects that you will take uh, in life, be it in high school, through to university and beyond, they're not easy. Sometimes we're gonna struggle with things more than others. Here, come in, sit down, let's sit down, let me see. Right, so uh, pharmacology will of course cover what the chemicals do inside our body, how they are uh, moved from the bloodstream. <laughs> He's back again. She's definitely gonna be a celebrity on this, uh, on this channel, I hope. One of those subjects that we, we definitely will have to cover in depth and uh, hopefully it will help me to, to, to get a good result as well at the end of this um, anesthesia and CPR module. Moving on then we have uh, something that ties in with it quite well is complications of local anesthesia. <laughs> He's back again, right? And uh, having known what pharmacology of local anesthetics and local anesthesia is, uh, it's nice to then know what complications are because as a dentist it's imperative to understand what could cause our patients any form of risk and uh, to alleviate that risk and ensure that we're not putting them in any form of danger. Uh, and then the final thing which wraps up quite nicely with this is CPR. If, for example, God forbid, a patient was to have an allergic reaction or some form of uh, pre-existing medical condition that is uh, flared up due to some sort of form of anaesthesia, uh, for example, somebody with hypertension and a vasoconstrictor uh, or a vasopressor could cause that to flare up. How do we deal with that as, um, as dentists, as students? Oh, very big. Um, and that's, uh, that's something that's very, very important for our safety as de dentists uh, in terms of practicing, our staff members as well, and most importantly, the, uh, the patients. So these are the things that we're going to be covering bit by bit. I'll be starting with the techniques of a local anesthesia and uh, we'll go through it one by one and hopefully get a good result in the final. So thanks for studying with me, thanks for coming along, and I'll see you in the next one.